Now, the next step is um, to add to this component a data table, which will then uh, uh, show identities and we will add search capabilities, like I mentioned before, and we will also have something like a detail view. Okay, then let's go back to VS Code. Before I can really add something to the components template, we have to do a couple of other things. First, when you have a library, um, you have also to export this new module and the new uh, um, components um, to, the, to the outside, to the public. Every library contains the public API TS file. Yeah? And here you can see this is like a, the interface to the outside. And here we have to add the newly uh, created module and component. Let me do that. So now we have um, exported our new mod uh, module and the component. Yeah. And another thing we have to do is to add some imports. Be because when we use our data table, and it's, it's a reusable component. This component needs a couple of imports, so we have to do that in the module file. Yeah. Let me do that. So we have a lot of new imports. I will not go into this into detail, um, but um, we have imported a couple of um, UI framework modules so, for example, this is um, the icon module from Material Angular Material. Then we have our own UI framework, uh, Elemental UI. It's this one, and so on and so forth. Yeah. This is the first thing we have to do. We also imported um, the data table module. The data table module is like the menu service, one of our reusable components. Um, for example, the data table uh, lives not in QER, but it lives in QBM. So the data table lives in, Q in the QBM library. You can see it here. So we have the data table with a lot of stuff in it. Um, then there's also something uh, called the data source toolbar, which works together with the data table. Um, and the data source toolbar, and again, we will address it in a, in a different session, uh, contains the data source of the data table. And, and search capabilities and filter capabilities. But again, this is a little bit out of scope. Going back to, the, to our component, I will now add the data table and the data source toolbar. Now, as you can see, uh, this is a little bit of code. And, and of course, you don't have to type it again and again and again, so there, there are a lot of places uh, where you can simply copy and paste it and then adapt to your needs. Yeah? For example, you can go to the request and it's in the same uh, library, so it's also in QER. Yeah? This is about request history. And for example, the request table component also has, has the three uh, uh, reusable components. So you have the data source toolbar, you have the data table, and at the end, you will have the paginator, as you can see here, and then you can adjust it. Again, we will address the data table because this is a component which is pretty often used, yeah? and we will go into details and explain how you can add columns and, and, and change the UI of the columns, so how, how, how it looks like. Yeah? Uh, but again, you don't have to type everything again and again. You can simply copy and paste it from, from already uh, existing components. Now, in the TS file, um, we have now to add this missing elements. Um, so this is the TS file. And right now, it's again, it's only boilerplate. It does not contain really the stuff we need. Yeah. I will not go into details, but, but there are, not in this session, but there are a, a couple of properties uh, which, which you, you always will need when you work with the data table. For example, 
the data source toolbar settings. Yeah, you will need them. You will see pretty often the entity schema uh, display columns means uh, I will define he here are the columns uh, I want to show. Yeah, you, you can see it here, for example. So we will basically see something like a default display. Yeah, it's the first line here. And we want also show uh, the default email address. And then you will see another column which will contain a button. Yeah. So these two are, how can I say that, data driven. So they really display uh, properties of, of objects. Yeah. And, and this is a little bit synthetic. So this is simply a button. Yeah. It, it's, it's not in that case data. Okay, now if I save this file here and go to the template, you can see that the uh, the template is now happy. Yeah, so I can save it and then it will recompile. Now our application has recompiled and when I go to the browser, you can see here our identities table with a search bar. Yeah. So for example, I could search for Herwig and then it will, it will search. Uh, and this is a result. Um, right now we didn't wire up the details button. So it's there, but it's only sitting around doing nothing. And the next step will be to, um, to add a side sheet, which will show the details of the selected item. Perhaps a couple of words about the data table. When you look at the temp template, um, this tag represents the, the whole data table. And then, as we saw in the component TS files, this property defines which columns uh, will be visible in the data table. So we have um, for example, this is the default. We have always uh, a default display name. Yeah, this is the and, and, and that's this guy here. Yeah. Um, so we have three columns, and when you look into the template, um, we have underneath the data table tag, we have this data table column tag. So and these you can see we will you will see three. Yeah. And the first one, which is again the default display, yeah, is defined here. So the data table uh, can work in two different uh, modes. One mode is the manual mode where you can design the columns. The other is the automatic mode. Uh, and in that case, you don't need the definitions of the uh, of, of, of data table columns. Basically, what you have to do is you have to define here uh, which which columns you want to show, and then the the data table will figure that out by itself. But then you cannot design it. Yeah? So if if you want to show not only, for example, the the real value yeah, of that object, then you can see it here. So for this data table column. Uh, we are using a template, we are showing the, the default name of that object, but then we are showing a little bit more. So, for example, we are showing the, the display value of the identity type. Yeah. So when you look here, you can see that the first line is the, is the display name of the whole ob object yeah, or of the identity, but then, then we have also an additional line in this case. So the value is the primary identity. Yeah. Another uh, thing perhaps we can talk about, and again, I will not go into too much details, is the data source toolbar. The data source toolbar can do a lot of stuff. Uh, first, it's, uh, it connects the data source in the background with the data table, yeah? but it also supports search. So you can you can enable it or disable it. We have enabled it, yeah. And then basically you have uh, one event, the search event, yeah. And if you type in something into the search input field, 
uh, this event will be triggered and meaning that the search methods will be triggered with the keywords you typed in into the input box and internally then we have to handle that. Basically what will we do, we will talk to the API server and say, hey, we have here keywords, please search and then you will uh, consume the result. Another thing which is also common is this output which will trigger every time when you, for example, go from one page to the other, yeah, then this event will be triggered, which does mean, uh, so basically the data source toolbar is signaling to the client, something has changed on the UI, I need new data. Yeah? And we look, when we look at this uh, method, it's the on navigation changed method, yeah, the main function here is the navigate. And this is basically the link between the UI and the API server, so the backends. When you look at the navigate uh, method, you can see that, and this is the important part yeah, of the method, that we are talking to the API client. And we talked about the last time that these API clients are, are something like the middleware between the front end and the back end. Yeah? And, and for identities, for example, we use the API client with this call. So we say, okay, this is the portal person all uh, method and, and, and we are doing a get. Yeah? So if you navigate, if you go uh, to the next page or to the previous page, then the UI will trigger exactly this method and then this method will talk to the to the API server and will update the UI. So when I go, oh, okay, so we have only one result, so that's perhaps not a, yeah, we have not enough uh, data, but anyway. There is one last piece we have to add, um, looking at the identities component um, you can see that we have the search bar, we have the data table, but what is missing is the paginator at the bottom. So basically this is a layout problem. We have to add a little bit CSS stuff and we will do that now. So looking at the template, we have the data source toolbar, we have the data table and we have the paginator. But as you can see, there is no scrolling and the paginator is not visible. Let me go to the CSS file of that component and um, add a couple of CSS stuff. So these are the three uh, uh, settings we need. Yeah. And let me save this. Now, after our changes, you can see that now we can see the paginator and we have a scroll bar here. Yeah, so when I move forwards and back, yeah. Um, perhaps one word about the CSS rules here. As you can see, we are using a specific layout which is called Flex, that's Flexbox. Uh, the flex uh, box layout system is something which is built in more or less and, and we are using that more or less everywhere. If you are not familiar with Flexbox, um, there is one pretty nice site which explains Flexbox in a really nice way. And we can uh, uh, add the link to the description. Later, so if you want to know something about Flexbox, Flexbox um, this is a really good entry point here. So here you can see uh, which options you have, uh, but this is out of scope. 